Hi everyone, my name is Yi Kuan. I'm a first year PhD in the biomedical informatics at Northwestern. And today we're gonna explore our, uh, my research topic, multimodal machine learning in healthcare. So uh, what is healthcare? I would like to say your health information is like a huge jigsaw puzzle. It's not the one you found in a gift store that only have thousands of pieces, but like human genome, genome uh, is made up made up of billions of pieces of DNA basis. So it's a huge puzzle with millions, billions or even trillions of pieces. So um, remember the last time you visited a doctor, what did you do? The nurse came in and asked you some basic information, take your blood pressure, and uh, after that, the doctor came in and asked, hey, what's going on, and make some treatment plan. So the national average for a doctor visit is only 15 minutes. Within those 15 minutes, the doctor has to make a decision on your treatment and based on all the information you provided him or her. So is it good enough? Yes, most cases, like for uh, cold cough, it's pretty easy. The doctors can make a perfect decision, but what about something pretty complicated, like heart failure, like cancer? The doctors also need to make a decision within 15 minutes. Um, so th for sure there is some uh, room we can improve on that. So like how and who can do that? Let's explore artificial intelligence. You may heard of this term, like artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language processing, chat GBT. You might think it's pretty complicated, but let me explain for you. So I would like to say that machine learning is like a teacher and student. So the, the teacher is Miss Data or Mr. Data. They teach the, the model to say, hey, um, here's the historical data, and the model can make a decision built upon that. But I would like to say, so the machine learning model is trying to uh, mimic our human behaviors to think like how our humans think. But it's kind of different. As I said, the data is like a, a teacher, but you have so many different subjects. Like say, you know, go back to high school, you have physics, chemistry. You have to have different teachers. And you may notice that uh, the model are trying to think like a, a, how our human thinks. But we think different, uh, we, we consider different information quite differently. Let's go explore first. So uh, the text data. You may not notice that, but how do we process the information in the text data? You read through it from left to right, right? You extract some keywords and find the key information within the text. And this is how we process data. So that's the clinical notes. You read through it left to right. But what about image data? As I say, a picture here, the Mona Lisa. You first see that it's a lady sitting there. It's good. You, that's the big picture of this picture, is the lady sitting there. But if you go to, into small details, the lady is smiling. You look at, into her face, her mouth, she's smiling. So when we process the image, it's from big to small. So that's the medical image, like the, uh, a chest x-ray image right there. And what about a, a numeric data, just the numbers? Let's say, uh, this guy is making a GPA 3.8, pretty good, but that is based on U.S. system, 3.7 to 4 is an A grade, pretty good. But in Germany system, one is the best, five is the worst. So 3.7, not that good. So for, so what did you find? So for a numeric data, you have to have a reference range. You, you can only tell uh, a number is good or bad based on a reference range. Let's say uh, the blood pressure, you have to know the normal range of the blood pressure so you can tell it's abnormal or normal. And time series data, like the stocking price. It's so many numbers happened in the past, uh, like five days, 10 days. You can see so how, how you process the information on it. You have to find the peak, the variation, and you can know what's going on with the stock price. So there's some time series data in the uh, medical domain. Uh, let's say here is a uh, EKG or echocardiogram. So you may find we process different information quite differently so we wanted our model to mimic our human ways to think of the data, so it's still different. So that's the difficulty of the area of this research. So as I said, the, dif the data are quite different. It's like uh, the, the pieces for jigsaw puzzles. Um, so what's the most important part is the interaction among different types of data, like the interlocking me mechanism of the jigsaw puzzle. So my research is to learn to learn the interaction of different modalities, modalities of data and to try to build a beautiful model to help doctors to make decisions. So how, how can we help? So like 
what should we do with this model? The first is personalized medicine. Your genetic information is quite different. It's unique, it's only for yourself. So we wanna build models that are personalized for you and to improve your healthcare. Then resource allocation, we can, um, we can stratify the patients and provide more advanced care for those patients at risk. And also, the last one, improved accuracy. We can help doctors to improve their accuracy and make clinical decisions. So how can you help? I think the first one is give some trust and help of AI models. We are not here to replace your doctors. Your doctor is only the first one to make decisions. We are helping them to give them some, some opinions and insights of your health information and help them to improve accuracy and advance their care. And the second one is share your data. So due to the HIPAA compliance and other regulations, we are now to use the data unless you are authorized to do so. So the next time you go to a clinic, they ask, can you support our research by uh, donating your data or just share your data with us? Please say yes, because together we can solve this jigsaw puzzle and make a healthy world. Thank you.